So today we're going to take the old football helmet out and play with Mr. Ringo. I'll tell you all right now, there's no way I'm going to win this battle. I am way too old. I'm out. I can't see. Hold on. Where's the camera? Is this thing still recording? I want to ask you a question. And I need your honest to God answer. Have you ever heard the expression, bottom of the barrel? Bottom of the barrel. And if anyone has ever referred to anything as bottom of the barrel, is that good or is that bad? Think about it for a minute. If you ever refer to something or someone or anything in life as, well, it's kind of bottom of the barrel, is that good or bad? That carries a very, would you agree that that carries a very negative connotation? In saying so, why would so many people insist that Lester takes his feeds that are in bags and begin to simplify my life by pouring feeds into a barrel? Because what happens is I have to feed the cows, right? I have to feed the horses and the donkey. I have to feed the alpacas, the goats. So I, if, if I have feed in this barrel... It's real easy to come out and scoop from here, scoop from here, scoop from here. Guys, but what do you think happens when that feed begins to get lower and lower? And that this point over here, I can no longer reach down that far. What happens right here? I stop scooping, don't I? I stop scooping right here. And what I do is go to the feed store and refill my, my, my feed. But what do you think happens to all of that feed from this point down? All that is feed at the bottom of the barrel. Oh, I come out the next week and the next week and I continue to scoop and scoop and scoop and scoop. Everyone's happy and happy. But I get to this point over here where I can no longer reach without coming off my toes. I don't want to fall into the darn thing, so I stop. And what do I do? What does every farmer do? Every farmer goes and they restock. They go buy their bags of feed and they refill their barrels. But what happens down here, y'all, is what they call the bottom of the barrel. That feed sits there and sits there. Over time, the bottom of the barrel becomes nasty. The feed at the bottom of the barrel, through humidity, through aging, the same way a store shelf, things can go bad on a store shelf, feed at the bottom of the barrel, it's no longer good for your animals and you end up wasting a lot of feed. Now, do not think for a minute that your farmers go out there and when feed gets that low, they take their barrel, their big old, their big old drum of barrel and they lift it up and they pour it out and they make sure that every drop is empty before they refill that barrel. They don't. They don't. That feed on the bottom of the barrel is bad feed. And I would not think that anybody would want us to ever feed these babies bad feed. And so what do we do? We don't use the barrel. Instead, our life is a lot easier by using the five gallon bucket and the bags of feed that they come in. Let me show you something. <sighs> if I have to go out and feed the cows and the horses, donkeys, guess what? I take the bag of feed and I need two buckets. I need two buckets. They go through two buckets a day. So watch this. You're going to freak out when you see this. I need two buckets, right? Two buckets. All right. Here's my scoop. 
scoop. Here is my feed. Okay, is everyone watching? I'm about to go out and feed the cows and the horses along with that donkey. I fill up this bucket and now I fill up this bucket. And guess what, my friends? If I do it right, All my feed's gone. I have one empty bag of feed. There might be a tiny little bit that I might just throw over the fence, but there's no feed. There's not enough feed in that bag to ever go to waste, to ever have a chance to build up mold or moisture or mildew or anything else that can hurt your babies. Instead, I've gone through a bag of feed. That bag of feed, the bag gets discarded and all of the feed gets used. All of it. There's no bottom of the barrel feed. Lester, you need a feed room. I have a feed room. Lester, you need to use containers like Cog Hill and like Arms Family use. And all the real farms have their stuff in containers. Yes, they do have containers. And I don't know how Jason manages the bottom of the barrel. I don't think Arms Family has the barrels. They have that contraption on wheels where they're there. They feed from the bottom. So their feeds come down from the top uh, by the force of gravity and weight. Uh, but for folks like us, we don't have access to things like that. And we can't use that because all of our feeds have a, they're uh, molasses based which means they textured and they would get sticky. Feeds that are sticky cannot be put into those, can, those things on wheels that are filled from the mills uh, because they would get clogged up inside of the, the contraption, the little feed dispenser. So yeah, feeding from the bottom of the barrel is, that's why we don't do that. We do not want to ever use containers where we're having to find feed down here that's not getting used. Because what would have to happen is this. You have to start turning your barrel over. You got to start trying to find a way to grab somehow and lift said barrel. And you have to get all that feed out. Where are you going to pour it? Where are you going to pour it? How are you going to take a barrel like this with feed that's about a quarter of the way full, lift it, and try to pour it into a bucket? Guys, as inconvenient as this may look, as sloppy as it can sometimes get with a little bit of spilled grain here and there, I prefer this way. I prefer this way um, than trying to feed from a big drum container. Because to me, picking up things at the end of the day Putting these into the burn pile or the trash is a lot easier. Having a couple of things to blow or spray out is a whole lot easier than the possibility of risking harming our animals with feed from the bottom of the barrel. Gosh, she'll take care of it. Where are you going? The hey, come here real fast. Oh, man, I don't look good. Doesn't oh, matter. Just come pretend here. that you have to feed today, right? Okay. And we feed out of containers, barrels. Here's, here's a good example. We were gifted this over here because okay. uh, folks would like to see us put our feed in containers. We agree this would keep it a little bit cleaner. It'd keep it a little bit safer from rodents. It'd keep it safe from when the goats get loose. But Jamie, show me from a side profile, oh how low could you possibly go with the scoop into that barrel? Only like About so far. And then secondly, how many scoops do you think it would take having to lean over and back up and lean over and back up? How many scoops would it take to fill up one bucket? 12. 12 scoops. That's 12 times to lean up, lean up. But how many buckets do we feed to our animals every day or our big animals? Two. We feed two. That means 24 times. Do it again. I want to watch you dip 24 times. You want to watch me dip right I'll right put it in, I'll put it in high speed. Okay, scoop it now, scoop it, scoop it. Okay, give me a whip. You can't scoop it more. You can't pick up that barrel. 
that. Now remember, there's there's some feed in the bottom of it. Uh, there's some feed in the bottom of it. Here's half a bag of feed. This is half a bag of feed. There's some feed. Let me see you pick up that barrel and dump it. Now that there's feed in the bottom of that barrel I'm that you can't, what it's gonna look like. I can I watch it? Can I watch you? How are you gonna pick that up and dump it into that? Here's how this is gonna go. Okay. You're gonna go like this, and then you're gonna see Jamie down here. <laughs> so, does this what Jason at Cog Hill does? Is this what my friend Jason does? Jason, is this what you do? Jason, is this what you do with your feed at the bottom of your barrel? It's a workout. No wonder he's so skinny. <laughs> Jason, that's why you don't gain no weight. So, no, my friends, I'm not trying to make light of Jamie or Jason and all of those amazing farmers that feed. From barrels. Oh, I know. I just totally bored you to death. Oh, Lester. I, everyone knew that already, Lester. Well, not everybody because that's probably one of the number one comments we get on our page every time we do a feeding video. And, hey, it would be easy to set a barrel out closer to the ostriches. Set a barrel out close to the goats. Set a barrel out closer to the cows, which they would knock it over. Uh, but the thing is, that doesn't work for us because my fear of getting the animals sick by feeds coming from bottom of the barrel. And there you go. Hope y'all enjoyed that. Don't y'all get mice in them barns because of all that feed on the ground? The answer to that is no. We don't get any animals on in here. Looky here. We don't have an issue with any animals because we have barn cats. And this little girl, this is her barn, y'all. This is where she eats. And there's not a mouse or a red bird that's going to live in here. So for all of you folks, you fine folks, I love when you offer suggestions. I do, guys. And I read every comment, and I appreciate it. But Jamie and I have tried this method. When you first... for people that don't pour, like, don't feed entire bags every day. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. It's, it would be like, great. stupid day is easy. Jamie, yeah. pause. But what about the bottom of the barrel? At what point does the bottom of the barrel get emptied? That was my I whole mean, premise here. It has a stigma for a reason. It has its what? It has a stigma. Bottom of the barrel has a stigma for a reason, y'all. You never want to be the bottom of the barrel. Don't let your troubles fester. Come watch Longhorn Lester. <laughs> yeah, something like that.